Hey everybody, Patty Ann here. Today I'm just going to do a little troubleshooting for Sue. She's trying to make this dinosaur over here on the left hand side right here, um, but has been having problems with it. So here's what the dinosaur looks like here. And I, the first thing I want to tell you is whenever you're getting clip art, no matter where you're using it, whether just in Cricut Design Space or in Silhouette for Cricut or just Silhouette for your Cameo machine, you do want to make sure you get the best kind of image that is possible. So when I typed in cute Triceratops clip art, um, the first thing I did was I came to tools over here and notice when that when I click on this these things pop up down here and I changed it from any type of an image which brings in all kind of things that have shading and could be photographs I changed it to clip art that's more what we want for our machines the next thing I did was came over here to where it said size and if it says any size you would think these would all be wonderful images to use but I suggest that you do not do that. I suggest you go to large or larger than. So if we just go to large and we can find that image that she wanted and this is it here and look at the size of it. 2400 by 1566 and that's a really nice size big image. So I'm going to bring that into silhouette and I actually have two different ones here. Um, notice this one at the top. Can you see that black line that's in the image? That's going to be a problem. So you want to try to find one that doesn't have a black line around it like that. If you can't find one here um, in Silhouette Studio, you can just take this eraser tool right here and begin erasing that line. And there's also a line, I don't know if you can tell, but down here at the bottom as well. So I would have to erase that too. And then when you get up here, you'll want to zoom way in so you don't accidentally get rid of any of the lines by his nose. So I was able to find another image. So rather than using this one, I'm going to come up here to the select arrow and click on it and then click on him and just delete him. I don't want to use that one. So if you'll notice this one right here on the other hand, there is no black line around him on the side, but I do notice a little tiny bit at the bottom here. So I will use the eraser tool and get rid of some of that. Now the eraser tool is a little small right now, but I can leave it like this if I want. When I get close, I'm going to hit the um, control key on my keyboard and the plus so I can zoom way in and see more easily what I'm doing because I really don't want to accidentally delete any of the lines that make up his foot. So right there and notice I'm letting go of my mouse every so often in case I make a mistake and I have to undo. I don't have to undo everything that I just did that was okay. This part right here I might want to zoom in again. You can come up here to where it says drag over a shape to zoom and do this and I can really zoom in like that and then still using my eraser tool just erase that oops look at that I just went in there so I gotta undo so again I didn't follow my own rule of click do something and then leave off my mouse so that if I have to undo, I don't have a whole bunch to undo. All right, and then we have this line over here to get rid of. Let me go over here. And I'll zoom back out by my control and the minus key. All right, and let's come up here and get the select arrow and bring him over. And I'm going to get rid of the rest of this line here. So again, with the eraser tool, and maybe you can hear me going click and letting up, click and letting up, click, let up. And if you want to make your eraser larger, you can by just coming up here. Since this is the tool that's selected, I can make its size bigger. And then I can more easily get this over here since it's not near any part of his body. All right, so now I'm going to zoom back out 
with the control and the minus sign. Get my select arrow again, and I'm just going to bring him right over here. And let's do this. All right. So now the next thing I'm going to do is I want to trace him. So I'm going to come over to the thing that looks like toast, and I'm going to select trace area. And I'm going to select this area here. Now that trace is not good that way. I'm going to make it down lower. Okay, that looks pretty good to me, except can you notice that these dots are not selected, nor is a circle around his eye. So that tells me I might have to do this in two traces, which is not a problem. So I was messing with the threshold while I was talking, and obviously that is not high enough because I have all kind of dashed lines, dashed lines. And again, I don't want it that far. So that looks about perfect to me. So I'm going to say trace. And I'm going to pull the tra this down. And there's my first trace. And it looks pretty good, except for remember some things are missing. So I'm going to trace this again. So let's scroll down a little bit. And I'm going to select an area to trace and do it again. Like that. And now what I want to do is I'm going to turn that up like that so that I can get nice edges on the circles. Okay, that looks pretty good. So what I'm wanting is this circle here and these circles. So I'm going to say trace. And again, I'll move this out of the way. And with this one, what I'm going to do is click on it and come up here to where it says Object. And I'm going to say Release Compound Path. That's kind of like Ungroup. It's going to allow me to pick some things. I'm going to click on this first circle, hold my Shift key down and click on this one and this one and this one. Okay, and then I'm also going to click on the outer eyeball. And then I'm going to come up here and I'm going to change its color to orange. So all of those pieces are orange right now. And I can move them off. This little piece right here I still need. I'm going to come up to the selection tool again, the select arrow, and select on that. And then I'm going to change its color to black. And then I'll just move it up here as well. Now all of this part right here, I can get rid of. So I'm going to delete. All right. So let me move these things down out of the way for right now. I can, if I'd like, I can group these together so they stay organized the way they are. So I can go to right click group or I can come up here to object group. And now I can move them down. All right, so now I'm ready to start coloring the Triceratops. Whoopsie. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make this part. Well, you know what I have to do first. I didn't do it yet on this part. I need to go to Object, Release Compound Path. Otherwise, I can't get to the different little pieces. So I think the first thing I'll do is I'll just click here. And I'll make the front of his head like a light green. Okay. And then I'm going to click here and make the back of him a little bit darker green. I think I need to come over here to the paint palette to get a darker green that I like. There we go. And these little legs should be the same color as his back. So I'm going to hold, click on one hold down my shift key and grab the other one. And then I can click over here in the color palette, the paint palette, and get that green again. Okay, that's perfect. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint or color his the horns on his head. So I clicked one, held down my shift key and clicked the other. And I came up here and I made them a brighter orangey color. And now 
I'm going to click the out, very outer edge and I'm going to make it black. You can make it any color you want. I'm making mine black. All right, very good. Now notice his eyeball is green right here, right? I'm going to change it. I'm going to click on the little eye, hold down my shift key and click on the green, and then come over here to the very far right where there's this modify panel. Click on it, and then I'm going to come up here and click on subtract. So notice what that did. That subtracted out the hole for his eye. So I don't have to have a little tiny black eye that I got to glue on top of him. And now these pieces, of course, they just get put up there. Uh, so the next one we're going to do is we're going to put this here. And I'm going to bring this little piece of black up here. Move this so it's right on top of where it was before. Okay. Then I'm going to hit this little black eye and this and say subtract. Okay, that's exactly what I wanted it to do. So now he's basically done. Look at these pieces. I have this piece and I have this piece and all these other pieces that are perfectly cut or going to be perfectly cut. So what I need to do now is I'm going to click on this one that I no longer need and I'm just going to delete it. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight all of this and go to Object Group. And I'm also going to, while it's all selected, go to Object, Convert to Path. Now, what I want to do, and this was a little bit of the area where Sue had a problem was, she had all kind of extra junk out here that wasn't working well for her or that would kept showing up. So what I suggest that you do is come up here to Panels and come all the way down to where it says Layers. Click on Layers and they'll show up over here. Now, we have some layers over here, which I'm surprised we have. There's the group. Okay, so that's that. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what this is because when I click off and on, off it and on, nothing shows up. So I'm just going to right click on it and say delete layer one because that's what it's named there. And then I'm going to look at this one and click off its eyeball and nothing is show nothing is changing. So I'm going to click on this. Click on it. And I'm going to delete layer one. All right, so all we're left with is this guy right here. So I'm going to go to file, save as, save to hard drive. And I'm going to name, name it Dino 5. And I'm going to save it as an SVG file so I can use it in my Cricut machine, Cricut Design Space. So I'm going to say OK, and it's probably going to say it already has it. Do I want to replace it? Yes. So now I'm going to open up Cricut Design Space. And let me go to a new one. That was one I had made already. Replace. So I'm going to go to Upload. And see, this is where I was playing around. I'm going to upload an image. Browse. And I'm going to browse for Dino 5. Here it is here. And I'm going to open. All right, there it is. So I'm going to save. And I'm going to click on him and insert him. And let's make him a lot larger. So now he's ready to be made. Um, 
Notice all these layers over here. Let's go to ungroup him and we can see what they are. There's this one and that's his the outer part of his eye right here. And then these are the four dots that are right here. We have two horns, his head, and then his two legs that were separate, his body, and the total back piece. And that's all that we have to do. We just need to go to make it now. And looks like I've made him too large. So let's go back and cancel because I don't have a large mat. I'm going to make him a lot smaller, especially because he's just a sample that I'm playing with to make sure it works. So I'm going to highlight all of this, or I could have come up here to select all. And I'm going to just shove it smaller so I don't have to use as much of my paper just for this test. So now I'll go to make it. And I'll make it and I'll put a picture of it at the very end of this video. So I hope this helps all of you who are trying to do tracing in Silhouette to use for your Cricut machine. Remember there are some important things when you want to get an image, make sure there's not a lot of shading in it if you're going to trace it. Try to make sure that there's a, an image with a lot of high contrast. Um, make sure that it's a large image. And that's pretty much it that I can think of right now. Um, so I hope this helps. If you enjoy my videos, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe and tell your friends. And remember, this is for Cricut, for our Cricut design space that we can use this. But you have to have the business edition of Silhouette. And that is not free. There is a basic edition that's free. And you can just practice this to see if you're even interested in learning how to do it. And, you know, paying the $50 for a, a one-time fee. And you own that for, you know, life. Um, it's not something that's in the cloud. This is a program that's on your computer. You can do things on your computer all day long. And you don't have to be connected to the internet. So, um, I guess that's it. Thank you. Bye-bye.